RTCI nous réunit. Welcome back. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you with us uh, today. Uh, and uh, today, our guests, uh, then uh, Professor Gélé Lezine, who is founder and president of uh, the Tunisian Association for the Advancement of Science, Technology and Innovation, and also UNESCO chairholder. And uh, also with us in the studio, uh, Mouné Jemeldin, uh, who is a pharmacist. So welcome to both of you. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you back here, Gélé. Hi, hi. Uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me and inviting uh, Yani alumni uh, Mona as well. And we are very happy to spend the next hour with you and with your audience. Right. Okay. So let's start with the association first of all, uh, TASTI, or the Tunisian Association for the, for uh, the Advancement of Science, uh, Technology, and Innovation. So what is it? Uh, when uh, did it start? I mean, how did you have the idea to uh, start this association in first place? Uh, thank you, Hayat, for this uh, very important question. Uh, of course, as any uh, Tunisian, right after the 14th of January, uh, we were all concerned about uh, Tunisia and the future of Tunisia. Yeah. And consequently, uh, there was a lot of dynamics, uh, basically uh, in the uh, political arena where we mm -hmm. saw hundreds of parties, you know, blooming. Uh, and at that time, I was between choosing, you know, uh, uh, to be part of this political dynamics or maybe remain in the uh, civil society mm -hmm. and contribute from that platform. And finally, I decided uh, really to go uh, to the civil society because I wanted really to be uh, with uh, uh, the friends also who wanted to be in this uh, experience with me. We wanted to be at the same distance of all political parties. Mm -hmm. And our objective was nothing but uh, uh, bring our uh, contribution, mm -hmm. if there is any, uh, to the new dynamics uh, uh, of the new Tunisia. You are exercising power, but from another dimension. Yes, <laughs> yes, perspective. yes, you're right. right. I mean, the civil society, and as we know, uh, course, for the last six years power. or so, right. uh, has been uh, a pillar right. uh, in this, uh, uh, you know, democratic transition. transition and without right. it, uh, <clears throat> Tunisia could have gone, uh, you know, uh, in some other mm -hmm. uh, unfortunate path. Right. Uh, so uh, I'm still convinced with that choice. Uh, I still would like to remain uh, in this neutral, mm -hmm. uh, politically neutral uh, terrain, if I may say so. However, uh, as you well said, we try to exercise power. But as far as I'm concerned, even though the word power is very meaningful, especially uh, during these times in Tunisia, but power in our uh, conceptions of things mm -hmm. is to really build capacity. Is action more exactly, than words. Exactly. Right. As a matter of fact, in our group, we talk about letting our actions speaking for us rather than our words, you know, uh, right. trying uh, to walk the talk. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are really trying to uh, contribute through our action. Of course, and as you all know, uh, in the civil society, while trying to implement projects uh, or whatever uh, activities and programs that requires funds mm -hmm. and that remains one of our biggest difficulties. But we are engaged. Uh, we uh, keep on doing as much as we can with the little means we have. Mm -hmm. And we have succeeded, I must say, uh, for the last six years or so to do a few things right. uh, with the meager means mm -hmm. uh, that we were able uh, uh, to get here and there. So your objectives for this association, what are they exactly? Well, our, our objectives, and I will start with the vision. All right. Uh, I wanted to keep the vision for the, for the end, but no, you, no, you no. choose. You are the president. <laughs> you are the founder. Uh, you know better than I am. Methodologically speaking, we have to start with the vision. Uh -huh. uh, and because once you have the beacon you that you would you like to reach for, right. exactly. Yes. Once you have the uh, long-term vision, then you know what to do uh, uh, and, and how to get to that uh, uh, you know, vision. So our vision is to make, is to contribute to the emergence of a Tunisia which is based on knowledge mm -hmm. and equity. Right. So uh, uh, as well as sustainability. So we would like to contribute to the emergence mm -hmm. of a, a sustainable, equitable knowledge society. 
Right. This is our beacon that mm -hmm. we are reaching for. And uh, we hope that many uh, will agree with us. And the main motivation behind that is that we as Tunisia, uh, a tiny country with about 10 million people, uh, we don't he have really natural resources. Mm -hmm. The only resource we have is the brain power of our citizen. That's right. And, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, that natural resource, uh -huh. we have to use it. And for the last 60 years or so, Tunisians have proven that they really were capable of uh, bringing about knowledge, of really uh, becoming at a certain point, uh, point a model in the region. Right. So I believe we have really all what it takes to take Tunisia through this path. Uh -huh. uh, so th that's our beacon. Right. And uh, how to do it? How to do the it? Question the question is exactly, yes. exactly. The idea is not to say, "Oh, I would like to be this or that," but one has to be also clear mm -hmm. about the means and the instruments uh, and the framework within which one can proceed uh, to get closer to this vision. Uh, uh, you know, and we are not inventing anything. We are trying to do uh, whatever succeeded mm -hmm. in some other countries, especially right. developed ones. And in this context, and especially uh, uh, to move towards a knowledge society, there is a very well-known and developed framework, which is called the National Innovation System mm -hmm. Framework. Mm -hmm. The National Innovation System is the ecosystem in a country which basically uh, integrates the whole country, to tell right. you the truth. Mm -hmm. And within this framework that was invented maybe uh, 20 to 30 years ago uh, by, by certain Professor Freeman and mm -hmm. then uh, developed further by Lundval, uh, etc. And the family is quite big. I don't have the time to talk right. about all of these people, but that's, that's not really our topic. Mm -hmm. So there is a framework, actually, which is called the National Innovation System. And uh, uh, there are papers, books, and even departments and research institutions that work in this area and that deliver training and capacity building in this area. The idea is as follows. How to leverage science, technology, and innovation to create development. Right. That's the bottom line. And this endeavor is not simple. It's a highly complex endeavor. For you really have to restructure mm -hmm. the society in a certain way where knowledge can be produced and leverage and, and leverage to be really a, a, a means of development right and this requires institutions mm -hmm. this requires know-how this requires uh, you know organizations so it really starts from the bottom which uh, where you find the citizen as entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. as uh, uh, researchers, as uh, uh, SME uh, uh, managers, uh, as uh, uh, you know people who are working in agriculture, mm -hmm. uh, any any uh, entity, entrepreneurs, to, uh, yes. any entity that is producing uh, whatever goods they are capable of producing, all the way to the government that uh, tries to actually create the right uh, environment within which these uh, levers can produce mm -hmm. development and well-being. Right. And that is really uh, a big undertaking. And understanding the bolts and nuts of such kind of system is not simple. Right. Today we hear about entrepreneurship, we hear about innovation, we hear about all these buzzwords that usually come from the West. Mm -hmm. But we don't really know the underlying dynamics that really uh, uh, give rise to these, uh, uh, you know, um, how would I say it, uh, results, if I may mm -hmm. say so. So somehow, if I can give an analogy uh, of this overall ecosystem, I would really talk of gardening. It's right. very much like gardening. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have a garden uh, and you are passionate about your garden, you try to do whatever it takes that pertains, of course, to gardening mm -hmm. so that your flowers, your trees, and whatever you have planted, mm -hmm. you know, will grow and give you the plants you desire. Right. Even choosing the seeds mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. And here there are very, very important issues uh, where the gardening uh, analogy could be a very nice way of thinking about it. 
We have tendency, and that's a big mistake we do in Tunisia and many, many underdeveloped countries or developing countries, let's mm. say, to be more optimistic. That's right. More positive. Exactly. <laughs> Sometimes we have a good seed in mm. our hands. And if you don't plant that seed in the right place, you know, place mm -hmm. it will not grow. Right. Even though the seed is really excellent and you've seen it somewhere else. Or it will become a weed. Exactly. <laughs> it, it will not even give anything. Right. So that's the problem. In <clears throat> Tunisia, when we talk about entrepreneurs, it's like very much a seed. But if that entrepreneur doesn't find the right ecosystem right. to be able to deploy uh, his or her, uh, you know, Uh, uh, capabilities mm -hmm. to be able Potential. to achieve, mm -hmm. then it won't be able to do so. And I always speak of, uh, uh, for example, bringing in, let's say, 100 Stephen Jobs to Tunisia, mm -hmm. let's say, okay, if right. we can uh, clone him, uh, may he rest in peace. <laughs> uh, you know, I assure you, because we don't have the right ecosystem, there won't be any Steve Jobs. Right. So, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's such a challenge. So how are you going to do this? I mean, uh, and what is your, um, you, we, again, your vision, uh, I mean, for uh, within this association uh, to uh, try and sensitize uh, maybe people, maybe decision makers, maybe uh, since you are on the civil society side, uh, in order to build all those capacities so that we can have the viable ecosystem that you are talking about. Exactly. That's really the challenge. The challenge is not just to say here is our vision and here is the framework. Anybody can go to uh, Google and uh, Google these keywords mm -hmm. and he will be able to read about all of these things and much, much more. So I'm not bringing anything new here. Mm -hmm. However, it's our action. And that's why I was insisting on actions that hopefully will contribute to the uh, 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 transition and the positive transition uh, uh, our country will undergo. For instance, things we started doing is training youth. So these are the activities these, within the association. These are now right. ac actions, you know, true actions, and mm -hmm. we have even results. Right. And I invited Mona, you know, here beside me uh, to actually... Uh, uh, to be to, to be a witness right. even, yes, to be a witness right. yes. due regard one action. Mm -hmm. Okay, but there are many other actions and we couldn't, uh, you know, invite uh, all of the people who were engaged in, in these actions. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we'll have other chances to invite sure. other people. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, I will talk about a couple of these actions. Mm -hmm. One of these actions that uh, is represented today by Mona is a program uh, that uh, targeted uh, uh, youth, Tunisian youth. Mm -hmm. Here, let me underline you know, what we mean by youth. Youth, in this instance, we define anybody who's below 45 years mm -hmm. as uh, a, a youth. Right. Okay. Because our training is a training that... Uh, Uh, deals with uh, the design of uh, uh, policies. Mm -hmm. And as you know, policies are whatever actions taken by government. Right. So to train Tunisian youth mm -hmm. to design governmental actions that are, uh, you know, spoken of in this instance as a policy requires, uh, first of all, uh, uh, some uh, methodology. Right. There is a well-accepted uh, uh, methodology and there are uh, uh, successful practices mm -hmm. that have been used in developed countries for many decades. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in Tunisia, we have no training, we have no capacity or whatsoever in this very, very important field. Can you imagine a, a, a government... I'm not speaking of any specific government. I'm just mm -hmm. talking about the government. The government okay. in general. Exactly. Yes. Can you... Uh, imagine a government that tries to steer a society in the right direction without no, without having any know-how about uh, uh, you know how to design action in order to facilitate the uh, uh, progress mm -hmm. of, of a country. It's very much you trying to drive a car without a driver license without, yeah, that's or right. trying to drive yeah. a bicycle without knowing how to ride a bicycle. Again, no vision. No vision and no know-how because yes. as I told you early on, having a vision is very important because it should not be just a vision. A vision has to be built on some realities. That's as right. I said earlier, you know, we don't have natural resources, but we do have, uh, you know, gray matter 
and consequently that's our only choice that's right i cannot today say okay my vision is to make of tunisia uh, the best oil exporting country that will be just you know nonsense that's right so a vision has to be uh, uh, built, on built on the realities yes. and the competitive uh, advantage of the country So uh, it's not just vision for visioning, it's a realistic vision. Mm -hmm. It's a vision that we can attain. If not, it would become, uh, uh, you know, uh, how would I say it, uh, an unattainable objective, which will bring more frustration right. than actually optimism. Right. So uh, the tools that I am talking about, and uh, as you know, I spent 10 years in the uh, administration, mm -hmm. and my last four years were uh, as a director general of international cooperation in the Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research. That really was an excellent experience. Uh, and I was able to understand how we actually make decisions to run the country mm -hmm. in Tunisia and because it was international cooperation I had the chance to be in other countries more developed and less developed mm -hmm. and consequently understand uh, uh, quite deeply uh, how important these ex experts on policy making are right so when I came back to uh, the university I decided that uh, the best way uh, to really contribute to this transition, and which will take time, mm -hmm. I mean, these are Certainly. not push button, yes. these are not push button kind of it's actions. It's a process. It's a process. Yeah. It's a learning process. That's right. And the learning process has to start by training youth in, these, uh, in, in this know how. There are tools, there are frameworks, there are experiences mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, a certain number. And the critical mass of Tunisians have to master in order for us to be able to run this country, to run and steer the country towards our common vision. Right. Okay. So the first thing we've done, we had this uh, uh, program. Uh, this is the Yani Fellowship. This is the Yani mm -hmm. uh, Fellowship. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, designed... Mm -hmm. It was run... And YANI stands for Young... It's uh, Arab Young Arab Analyst uh, network. Uh, network. Network. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a, a British Council program. Mm -hmm. And this is the second edition. The second Tunisian edition. Because I was a mentor in the first experience. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the first experience uh, wasn't as successful as we wanted it to be. And luckily, uh, the previous director of uh, British Council, mm -hmm. uh, my friend Nigel, Nigel. Uh, that I salute from uh, your uh, uh, place here, was so convinced that uh, uh, such trainings were fundamental for countries like Tunisia uh, that he accepted that we reformat mm -hmm. the, this training and make sure that uh, we will... Uh, uh, reach our adapt goal. To adapt it to our reality. Exactly. Yeah. Adapt it to, to our reality and uh, build it more rigorously, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. So I had the chance to design the program as well as look for the trainers. Mm -hmm. uh, and we did run act the whole program uh, ourselves. So it was uh, by Tunisians, for Tunisians, uh, with the financial support of the British Council oh, the British that uh, I thank again. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mona was among uh, really the brightest people mm -hmm. uh, in this group. And uh, she worked actually on a quite difficult uh, topic. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm sure she will be able to share some of these ideas with us in a moment. But just let me give you a couple of uh, more uh, uh, numbers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, about this program to give you an idea uh, of... Uh, Mm, uh, the process and All I don't right. want to say if it succeeded mm -hmm. or not mm -hmm. uh, I, I want the project to speak for itself right. I don't want to defend uh, but you will have an evaluation phase certainly, certainly. of the program uh, so definitely. you will tell us maybe later yes <laughs> hopefully <laughs> Actually, when we launched the program and uh, we asked uh, for participants mm -hmm. we had 300 participants which uh, for a first program who was submitted an application to take part yeah, you know, we, in this we, program. We made a call all right. for all Tunisians mm -hmm. and we said any Tunisian uh, below 45 years old uh, interested... No matter what the profile is. No matter what the profile is. Mm -hmm. But they had to uh, submit a CV mm -hmm. as well as uh, uh, a letter in which they 
like present letter of motivation a, exactly mm -hmm. a letter of motivation as well as a project All you right. know a policy project mm -hmm. so uh, it wasn't a simple uh, dossier it was quite heavy mm -hmm. dossier mm -hmm. and that was meant to be that way so that we can already select people uh, uh, those who are determined and really engaged mm -hmm. to be part of the training and you got 300 and we got 300 applications cool. yeah right. and uh, out of these 300 we chose uh, about 30 or 20 more 20. 20 20 so less than 10 percent So we had a jury and we really... Uh, Is it because of your welcoming capacity? Yes, I mean, yes. Yeah. We wanted okay. really the group to be small enough mm -hmm. so uh, we could really have basically a one-to-one -one kind of an experience right. As well and as because it is maybe your first experience, so you really wanted it to succeed, um, and um, maybe with a smaller number you could uh, maybe uh, manage it better. To to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. Hayat, it, it's not. Uh, we were not afraid not to be able to handle a big, uh, a, big uh, a big number. No, mm -hmm. I mean I, I have a 30 years experience, you know, in teaching uh, in universities, right. uh, and I know how important to work uh, with the student directly on one to one, mm -hmm. because it's really. Uh, an experiential, uh, you know, training. Right. Uh, you need the student to actually do uh, the work mm -hmm. uh, to get the mentor uh, to help him or her. Uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, how would I say it? Uh, uh, do better, mm -hmm. uh, and all of that requires really a smaller number of, of, of student, uh, because also we didn't have so many mentors. Right. So I think that that number was all right. 20. 20 people. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the last moment, uh, one lady uh, couldn't uh, make it. Mm -hmm. So we ended up uh, with uh, 19. Mm -hmm. And out of the 19, only eight graduated. Wow. So it's really a, a selection which it is... Was, uh, it was very, very selective. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though... Uh, you know, we made sure to pay everything, mm -hmm. even the transportation fees for our trainees. That's wonderful. And we made sure also the condition within which they were working mm -hmm. were top notch mm -hmm. so that they don't think that if we do, uh, you know, such training in Tunisia, we, we only do it in really uh, uh, um, unacceptable conditions. Mm -hmm. They were in top notch conditions uh, and we wanted really uh, to tell Uh, our youth that we are capable of doing things mm -hmm. uh, with high uh, or, uh, you know with high quality with high quality with high quality do you, do you have premises for your association where do you run all these trainings and everything no this uh, this no. training was run in a hotel wow mm -hmm. and uh, each so you have you have funds yes. for that and you said the british council yes. is funding all this exactly the okay. british council mm -hmm. funded this uh, activity agreed uh, on these terms and uh, all the trainees were in a very very nice hotel uh, mm -hmm. each trainee had uh, her or his own room uh, for how long It was actually the first uh, train because it was in three stages. Mm -hmm. The first stage was about five five days. Yes, right. five, days. five days. The second one was about four days, mm -hmm. and the last one was one day. So because. Uh, the graduation wasn't one shot graduation. Mm -hmm. We really had to select the best in three stages. Right. So the 20 uh, went to the first phase of mm -hmm. training. They stayed about five days and they were working hard. Right. And I, I can tell you, you know, how they thought about <laughs> me when uh, we, we were doing the training. And after that came the first, uh, the second selection. So we made mm -hmm. the first selection. Mm -hmm. uh, about half of them right. continued made it. and half of them stopped mm -hmm. they were excluded from the program all right then we spent the two or three months and they were and they kept working on their public policy mm -hmm. uh, brief and then we called them for another more advanced session mm -hmm. so they took four days of an advanced training where we brought in uh, you know more material mm -hmm. more tools uh, and more know-how and As the training is delivered in english or uh, in it other was languages? it was in both Mixed. It mixed. was mixed. It was French mixed. and English. It was in French and English, mm -hmm. yes. Even though in, at the beginning, we really wanted it to be all in English, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. y you know me. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but since we have some trainers uh, who felt they would be, they would feel better, uh, you know, training. In, More in, confident, in, in, you know, exactly. in French, in the language. We, we, right. we try to be flexible because okay. the objective wasn't necessarily That's the language. That's not the language. That's exactly. Right. The, it's the, it's the know-how and exactly. the knowledge. Exactly. The knowledge. Exactly. So, 
The third, uh, the second level was a more advanced uh, material, mm -hmm. and we also accepted about half of them, and uh, uh, I would say no, a little bit, uh, a little bit more than half uh, right. of them, and then we had the last day, the last day, where it was a quite special, really uh, last phase of the training, mm -hmm. because we made them evaluate their own uh, colleagues. Right. So we stepped so back. So peer to evaluation. Exactly. All right. We had a peer evaluation. So each one of them was evaluated by the remaining uh, trainees. And how many? Uh, we were about, uh, at that time... Seven or eight persons, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, seven, uh, for the peer review. For the peer review. Um, seven persons? No, Something like eight, right. eight or nine, yeah. I believe. Eight or, eight or nine. Or nine. Uh, yeah. Right. And that was... A very nice experience. And, and how did they do that? I mean, uh, do they have like to pitch a project or what did they have to do? No. Uh, the, the one fundamental idea in mm -hmm. this uh, training is for the, stu for the trainees to work on the same policy mm -hmm. all the way. From, right. from the submission of the dossier okay, from the all beginning the to way end. To, exactly okay. because the objective because was the evolution exactly right, right. and we wanted to see how they would capture whatever they learned mm -hmm. from the training and how they would improve that policy e exactly right. and actually when we were evaluating them between let's say the second and the, uh, in the second phase was mainly to see how much they improved mm -hmm. their work due regard the training they got right so it was a very very um, uh, rigorous uh, evaluation. So that was the first cohort? This is the first cohort. Mm -hmm. And we were very happy because also in the last phase where they had the peer review, we wanted them to become the experts. Mm -hmm. We wanted to, sh to see them acting as experts and evaluators. Right. So they, they were no longer recipients of uh, uh, know-how and knowledge, but they were evaluators. And what, what kind of follow-up have you uh, then uh, uh, maybe prepared for those uh, graduates now? Uh, to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. uh, not much, I must say. Uh, the only thing we have uh, is that we have a Facebook mm -hmm. where all, all the people, uh, trainees or trainers, uh, mingle uh, with each other within this uh, virtual space. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard through that space that uh, few of them, because of the training, even when they were not really, when they didn't graduate mm -hmm. fully from the program, mm -hmm. got really uh, accepted and quite challenging new jobs. That's good. Uh, such as in the United Nations or, uh, you know, uh, uh, enter, you know, such kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, valuable institution, if I may say so. So you, you said something very important, uh, Jalil. You said you are giving them the tools. So you gave them the tools and with those tools, uh, they, they will be ready to, to use them in whatever maybe field uh, that pertains to uh, policy um, making. Or, uh, so I, I think you have equipped them with, with some tools and uh, maybe now it's, um, uh, you will let it go for a certain period and then maybe evaluate and see what you can do after that. Uh, you know, as any training, you know, uh Training never stops. Learning never stops. Of course, it's an ongoing uh, process. Exactly. Yeah. So we, what we really wanted to do, I mean, one of the bas basic objectives, uh, to tell you the truth, you are not going to make top experts mm -hmm. uh, after, let's say, five, four, after 10 days of, of training. That's right. You cannot really make a top expert. Mm -hmm. But what we wanted to do also, let's not forget that uh, within this transition period in Tunisia, we also need citizens mm -hmm. who, who understand what, what it means for a government to implement policies, mm -hmm. how they come about these policies, uh, how they design them, how they monitor their implementation. Mm -hmm. So that was, as far as I'm concerned, the most important objective. Right. Because, uh, you know, through the training, not only they learned what it means to design a policy, mm -hmm. how to design it, how to implement it, but also they learned about politics. Right. Uh, they also learned about democracy mm -hmm. because in developed democratic country, you cannot design a policy without having all stakeholders yeah, involved. Included. That's what we call participative exactly, democracy. Exactly, exactly. Right. So 
not only we were trying uh, to um, train these future experts, but also we were also preparing a new type of Tunisian citizen mm -hmm. who is more alert, uh, who understand better, right. who has a more systemic view of things mm -hmm. and can be uh, more critical uh, of what is being done right. by our leaders and politicians. Right. And we hope, and maybe Mona can tell us, because we are planting seeds. Mm -hmm. Mona right. and her environment and her family with her friends, I am sure uh, if she is not speaking about the program, she, is, she has been somehow uh, given uh, a bit of know-how that her attitude in work mm -hmm. and society becomes different. That's right. And more constructive. Okay, so we'll have a short break with music and then we will hear from Mune uh, about her experience. Mune is a pharmacist, so she will tell us how she ended up there. Stay with us, we'll be back. You say 
Welcome back. Uh, this is the International Service of Radio 2. It's 38 minutes after 2 on our radio station. And we continue with our guests, uh, Professor Jalil Lezin, uh, founder president of the Tunisian Association for the Advancement of Science, Technology and Innovation, and uh, Mouna uh, Jamaluddin, who is uh, an alumni, a Yanni alumni, the program that uh, Professor uh, Jalil Lezin was talking about, uh, uh, the Young uh, Arab Network, uh, then... Uh, uh, the Young Arab Network? Analyst Network. Analyst, Analyst yeah. Network, sorry. The Young Arab Analyst Network. So, Muna, you were a participant in this uh, program, the Yani program. Uh, so, what can you tell us about it? First of all, how did you end up there? I mean, you are a pharmacist. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Hayat, uh, for your warm welcome, Professor Zin, uh, for your trust. Um, let me first introduce myself. Yes, I'm a pharmacist. Uh, I'm working for uh, the National Instance for Assessment and Accreditation in Healthcare, in mm-hmm. Santé, a new agency under the umbrella of the Ministry of Health. And uh, I have been uh, for the four um, years, for the four year, last years, one of the members of uh, the implementing team of this agency. Mm-hmm. And now, uh, currently, I'm uh, head of the Health Technology Assessment Department in this agency. So um, I heard about Tiani uh, through uh, through a friend, and then I applied uh, on the net. Uh, as the Professor Zin explained it, it was a, a very selective process, and uh, yeah, we had to submit a CV, uh, a kind of statement of purpose mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. a topic that we had uh, to deal with uh, due, uh, during all the training. Uh, it was uh, a very nice uh, bid- capacity building training. Uh, we had to go. Uh, through uh, three uh, different, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, each one uh, corresponds to a, a different competency level that mm-hmm. we acquired during uh, the whole training mm-hmm. uh, since the beginning. So uh, at the first stage, we were uh, only uh, 20. That was very interesting because uh, there were um, different people, different mm-hmm. backgrounds, mm-hmm. Uh, mainly from health, uh, education, agriculture. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, the exchange was very interesting. And uh, the exchange as well uh, with the trainers, with the trainers, mm-hmm. were uh, was very interesting as and well. And they were they were all people on the job. I oh, mean, uh, <laughs> mainly I think mainly mm-hmm. they were uh, on jobs and uh, uh, very good positions. Um, mm-hmm. They were, uh, uh, I think, mainly from health, Professor Zin, and mm-hmm. then uh, university, yeah, university, yeah, as well, and the private uh, sector? yeah, the private sector, right. agricultural sector. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember this uh, mm-hmm. well. Uh, so it was very interesting to so, to see how uh, all these people were really interested by uh, this uh, specific. Mm-hmm. topic of uh, policy analysis and how we can uh, use uh, this kind of tools in order to uh, develop uh, policies in different um, sectors. fields mm-hmm. sectors or or fields uh, i would like also to thank the uh, the very good trainers uh, for, for their uh, time their availability mm-hmm. uh, really we learned a, do- a lot uh, in Apart the different from stages Jeanette, how many were there um so um how many uh could be about 10 or so. About, about yeah. 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Each in ten a different uh, field, of course. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Um, I will talk about uh, the, the different uh, fields uh, because we dealt with uh, what is the policy analysis, mm-hmm. what are the actors of policy analysis, the processes, uh, the legal issues mm-hmm. um, to uh, the stakeholder analysis, the, uh, the analysis of the environment, uh, how to use statistics to also mm-hmm. uh, in order to uh, develop uh, policy papers mm-hmm. as well. So different backgrounds even for uh, for the trainers and very very good uh, quality of trainers um, in this um, mm-hmm. field so uh, it was a uh a bit stressful, uh, mm-hmm. let's say, because uh, we had a very short period in order to uh, improve our topic, to uh, to take into account all uh, what we learned during this mm-hmm. training in order to um, shape uh, in a new way our uh, policy papers and uh, learn a lot from all uh, the experiences of the, the trainers. Mm-hmm. And um, so, so what, what do you think are the benefits of this training and how do you think this will help you in uh, uh, now having another another way to look at policies, if you want, especially in your field? Yeah, um, actually, um, so uh, my daily work consists in uh, determining uh, the value that health uh, 
products can deliver to patients, mm -hmm. to uh, to patient, their family, the society in a more uh, broad uh, level. And uh, really, we are um, our work consists in influencing uh, decision making mm -hmm. through uh, using established scientific methods. Mm -hmm. So it is really very linked with a policy analysis. Right. And uh, I will try to uh, to develop this, uh, to work on this even through my position in uh, in mm -hmm. our agency. So uh, it is very interested. Uh, now I think that uh, in this context we have to move, we have um, uh, to have a new particip participatory approach mm -hmm. uh, specifically for uh, the civil society and we have to um, have decision, mm -hmm. evidence-based decision, deci right. decision that are based on evidence. Right. So it is very linked to my work. We can't, uh, we can't work without uh, taking into account this way of, uh, of shaping policies. Mm -hmm. So now that you have the tools, uh, what do you think are the things that you can improve in, uh, improve, sorry, in your profession, for instance? So it's very important through uh, this training you acquire, you know, the tools how to um, how to elaborate a paper, how mm -hmm. to to capture uh, the attention of the policymaker. What are uh, the main parts that we have uh, to find in your paper? Mm -hmm. How to to find solution? How to find the best solutions? How to use the literature in order to find the evidence, mm -hmm. the required evidence, and how to present this? How to present your proposition and how to deal with the risks linked to this proposition? Right. right. So. It is very inter it is very interesting, very insightful as a training, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I encourage really vividly uh, people who want to uh, to be a part of re a reform of a mm -hmm. transition mm -hmm. to uh, take up this kind of training. That's wonderful. So, when is the next cohort, Professor? Well, uh, the next cohort <laughs> would be as soon as we get uh, funds. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> because that's, that's a very important issue, yeah, yes. To tell you the truth, uh, this is uh, really a quite a costly training. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, to be able to train, let's say, about 20 smart people like Mona, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, requires uh, the funds. That's right. Uh, today we feel uh, more confident mm -hmm. uh, since we went through our first experience. Uh, we know uh, what we should uh, uh, modify, mm -hmm. enhance, uh, let go of right. as well. Right. So I believe uh, we can have much, much better uh, second training. Right. Uh, but um, I call for whoever is willing, you know, to put some money for us and help us uh, to get our second and maybe third cohort uh, is most uh, welcome to do so. And I uh, even call for the British Council to uh, continue right. uh, supporting <laughs> this activity since uh, it was, uh, you know, the um, originator mm -hmm. of the idea with the Yani project. And uh, we are really willing also uh, to connect with other uh, civil society in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, Mona was telling me that she went to another training yes. in Morocco, mm -hmm. uh, f uh, you know, doing basically the same thing uh, and she was among the best people yeah, I was among the so that was due to our training let's say here. I was really well prepared uh, <laughs> right, compared right. to the others she had the right tool yeah, yeah. yeah, Mona, yeah, Mona right. is uh, you know, I'm, you. I'm sure she would have been uh, she would have been <laughs> outstanding even without the Yanni <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, right. Professor Zin time flies by and you need to say a few things about the master degree that you have created and about uh, the UNESCO chair because I have uh, presented you as uh, 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 a holder, a UNESCO chairholder. So you have yeah. to tell us about this as well. Th thank you. Thank you, Hayat. Uh, I think that's very important because... But uh, you will owe us another visit to talk a little bit more about other issues maybe inshallah. that we cannot, we could not cover today. Uh, sure. Uh, anytime. Uh, well, I mean, uh, the association TASTI, mm -hmm. as, uh, and you know, uh, TASTI was just by chance. And as you know, in uh, Tunisian slang means the skull. So right. it's the house of the brain. <laughs> okay. <Right. laughs> so I like to say TASTI. TASTI, uh, that's right. And, and, and to understand it the Tunisian way. Uh, well, I mean, TASTI was actually the first pillar Uh, that we uh, try to, um, uh, you know, uh, erect, if I may say so, uh, 
to contribute to this uh, transition. But we didn't stop there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because uh, one association won't be able to do this really big job by itself. Mm -hmm. And training uh, in 10 days uh, through YANI programs is good, but it's far from uh, sufficient. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that I've done with uh, some other colleagues is, uh, is that I launched uh, a master program. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, a unique and uh, the first actually such programs in Tunisia called Engineering and Technology Policy. At uh, ENIT? At ENIT, exactly. Yeah. In my mm -hmm. school, ENIT. And uh, this is basically a hybrid uh, training between engineering and political science. Mm -hmm. Because in general, policy analysis training happens in political science departments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, you know, I saw that the world is really uh, becoming more and more complex. And uh, Tunisia, as any other country, uh, is apprehending uh, highly complex issues. Mm -hmm. And we cannot use the same tools we've been using the last 60 years to apprehend our difficulties. What we need, we need new tools, we need scientific approaches, uh, and, and, and really uh, know-how uh, that showed its uh, value mm -hmm. in some other countries. And having the engineers uh, that master uh, many of these analytical tools uh, is a good addition mm -hmm. to the political science dimension to actually apprehend these complexities. Right. So really it's an interdisciplinary kind of a master program, which is another innovation as well as a challenge. Right. Uh, so so uh, when, when did it start? It I mean, started in uh, 2015, 2000, year, you know, 2015. So right. we have mm -hmm. our uh, first cohort uh, who's undergoing now its second year mm -hmm. and our second cohort uh, that is uh, now uh, in starting first year. exactly mm -hmm. in, in its first year. Mm -hmm. So uh, how many applied for this? Uh, well, this is now uh, a master program. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, the first cohort, we had about uh, 50 people. Mm -hmm. And of course, we went through interview very much like Yanni uh, had uh, 30 of them. And after the first year, only 14 remained. Mm. So it's the same yeah. selective, rigorous process. Uh, uh, process. Right. Uh, okay. So Yanni somehow was really a tiny master program, probably. <laughs> yeah, uh, <that's> right. <laughs> some of them blame <laughs> me for that. the inspiration. Exactly. Exactly, well, exactly. Yeah. So we went for a real training where we were uh, really to, uh, we wanted to really uh, produce experts in mm -hmm. policy making. But in this time, uh, the master program is specialized. It's policy and technology transfer mm -hmm. in science and research and innovation. While Yanni was very, very broad, it was right. about anything, uh, uh, any you know, policy that the government uh, might uh, design for any uh, sector. Mm -hmm. But this one is more specific. This one is more specific because, as I told you, this is coherent with our right. vision. Right. Our vision is to have a knowledge society and the lever for knowledge society is science, technology and innovation. That's right. So we try to be so coherent. the masterminds, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it's a puzzle that uh, we are trying to put together in a coherence and little by little because we cannot do th things at once. Right. So that's the master program and we are starting to see some results because mm -hmm. the one of the pillars uh, of this training is that these students have to really write research papers mm -hmm. about uh, policy issues right and today we really have some uh, uh, papers that are quite interesting and uh, I can see these uh, this youth uh, dealing with new ideas mm -hmm. because we encourage them to go beyond and to think out of the box right. and to really use the latest technology okay. and things are working fine great great I'm glad to hear that. And uh, maybe last but not least will be the UNESCO chair. So how did you end up holding this UNESCO chair? Exactly. I was talking about that puzzle and about this coherent vision. Uh, when I launched this master's program, uh, I sent it actually as a suggestion to UNESCO. Mm -hmm. UNESCO were very, very happy about this program and they really liked it, especially that I gave it an African dimension. That's because right. uh, I forgot to tell you that uh, this is not a master program for Tunisians. It's really a master open program. To Africa as it's well. open to the region yes. and mainly to Africa. Why? Because they have the same ills. They don't have experts. 
to really design policies right. that are contextualized and respond to their own challenges. Right. This is really the key issue about this training. It's to promote this South-South cooperation as exactly, well. That we exactly, hear exactly, exactly. And we also we would like uh, Africa uh, to really bootstrap itself mm -hmm. and not really remain there, you know, waiting for aid like we are doing right now that's in Tunisia. Right, that's right. Uh, aid and assistance from, uh, you know, the big international whoever. agencies. Exactly. Whatever. And whoever right. gives you aid and assistance has always its own conditions. That's true. So, and sometimes these, sometimes the conditions are, are a win-win, uh, maybe kind of conditions. And you are but working many, on many the times, sustainability. Exactly. Course. And yes. you need to work on this on, on, on a long-term thing. So, when I present this program uh, to UNESCO, uh, it was accepted and uh, we had even a conference with UNESCO mm -hmm. uh, that brought uh, at least 30 experts from all over the world uh, that discussed this master program together. Mm -hmm. We wanted to really have experts telling us what were the strong points, what were the weak points. And uh, uh, through that uh, uh, meeting, we were able to get an international uh, network uh, for uh, capacity building and policy making. So after these two experiences, we ended up uh, getting uh, uh, a UNESCO chair mm -hmm. in uh, science, technology and innovation policy, I believe, as a recognition of these dynamics and as a lever to pursue this vision. Well, that's uh, that's very interesting and uh, great, really, to uh, to hear about. Uh, there is a, a conference to be held in Geneva. Uh, tell us about this conference. Yes, uh, now that we are part uh, of uh, the UNESCO chairs in the world, there mm -hmm. are about 600 chairs in, in the world. Tunisia has six. Uh, so, uh, uh, and uh, as you know, there are the uh, Sustainable Development Goals mm -hmm. uh, that were ratified in 2000, after 2015. Right. And now UNESCO wants the uh, chairs, mainly the science chairs, mm -hmm. to contribute, to come up with a strategy to help uh, implement the SDGs and the 2030 agenda, agenda. of the United Nations. Right, so yes. uh, the uh, science chairs will hold uh, a meeting uh, the 5th and 7th of July in Geneva, mm -hmm. uh, where I would be uh, participating as uh, the uh, policy chair in Tunisia, mm -hmm. as well as a member of the steering committee of this international event. So this is what it will be about. It is about the, the development goals. Yes. The, the 2030 is, agenda, especially. It is exactly yes. the contribution of the UNESCO chairs and the implementation of the SDGs mm -hmm. and consequently contributing to the UNESCO uh, the 2030 agenda. Mm -hmm. And uh, the main issues for Tunisia will be? Well, the main issues is uh, uh, for Tunisia to play its role as any other modern country right. who would like to see a more prosperous world and plenty of well-being to everybody. Well, thank you very much. That was really very, very interesting. Thank you, Mune, as well, and wish you thank all you. the best and hope uh, uh, to see you one day participating, you know, uh, actively, really, in this in these decision-making policies, uh, whether it is for the health sector or for the country uh, in general. It's, it's a whole roadmap that you have given us uh, today, and uh, um, we, we never uh, hear enough from your activities, uh, Professor Jalilzin. So thank you very much. You owe us another visit to talk a little bit more about uh, the other uh, issues that other, we have yes. put on our agenda for today. <laughs> but unfortunately, we could not we could not cover all of them. Uh, let's uh, uh, finish by the, the last track for you today that I have selected, Jusqu'au bout de mes rêves. Oh, and wow. I, <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> Wonderful choice. Well, this is the last track for you today. I thank you uh, for having accepted our invitation and we look forward to having you in our future programs. Coming up next, uh, a news update in French and the German language program with Olfa. I also thank uh, Jeannette for her technical assistance. Our last track for you today.